This week, we're celebrating 150 episodes and 150,000 subscribers with this long-awaited look at the Champion of Kaon, the Great Slagmaker, the Leader of the Decepticons, the Mighty, the Malevolent, Megatron. The toy that would become the original Megatron was first released in the Japanese toy line Microchange in 1983. The figure transformed into a Walther P-38 pistol and was available in three colours – grey, black and chromed silver. The silver version came with three special accessories – a scope, a stock and a silencer – based on the unique Walther pistol seen in the 1960s TV series The Man From U.N.C.L.E. And it was this version of the figure that was licensed by Hasbro and imported to become part of the first year of the Transformers toy line in 1984. The gun's scope attached to Megatron's arm to become his iconic fusion cannon and could combine with the other accessories to form various different larger weapons. Marvel Comics writer Bob Budiansky wrote a profile for Megatron that characterised him as a merciless, compassionless warlord who believed that everything was fodder for his ambition to conquer first Cybertron, then the universe. The name Megatron was devised by Budiansky as a portmanteau of Megaton, the measurement of the explosive power of a nuclear bomb, and Electronic. Hasbro initially thought that the nuclear connotation made the name sound too scary, until Budiansky told them that being scary was the point. Like his eternal enemy Optimus Prime, Megatron was one of the Transformers brand's most prominent figures in its first two years. His attempts to plunder the resources of Earth chronicled in media and merchandise of all shapes and sizes, most famous among them the Transformers animated series and Marvel comic book. Infamously though, in some of his earliest appearances, including the first television commercials and the first two issues of the comic, he appeared with an alternate character design based on a prototype for the Microchange toy, which was quickly updated to better reflect the finished toy's appearance. In the cartoon, Megatron was brought to life by the rasping performance of actor Frank Welker. You destroy everything you touch, Megatron! <laughs> Because everything I touch is food for my hunger! My hunger for power! In addition to the Autobots, the cartoon frequently saw Megatron at odds with his untrustworthy lieutenant, Starscream, who was always scheming to overthrow him as leader. Megatron faced different challenges in the comic. Here, he was actually usurped as leader by Shockwave very early in the series and spent much of the comic's first two years competing with him to regain command. He would also clash with the Autobot medic Ratchet several times over the course of the series. Stories exclusive to the United Kingdom's version of the comic notably showcased Megatron's ability to manipulate antimatter saw him face further challenges to his power from Straxus, the Decepticon commander back on Cybertron, and fleshed out his origins, revealing that before the war he had been a gladiator, something that would go on to become a recurring backstory for the character in the 21st century. Megatron's toy was discontinued in 1986 and he was phased out of both the comic and the cartoon in two very different ways. As seen in The Transformers The Movie, Megatron was gravely wounded in his final battle with Optimus Prime and dumped into space by Starscream to die. There he was found by the monster planet Unicron, who used his vast cosmic powers to restore and recreate Megatron as Galvatron. In this new form, he would continue to lead the Decepticons through the remainder of the cartoon. Check out the basics on Galvatron to learn more. In the comic, on the other hand, Megatron didn't become Galvatron. Instead, after his and Prime's final battle ended with Optimus's death, Megatron became consumed by the paranoid delusion that the Autobot leader had secretly survived. In the grip of this insanity, he blew up the Decepticon's transdimensional space bridge while he was standing on it and disappeared in the explosion. He would resurface in the UK comic as part of an epic story in which he teamed up with his own time-travelling future self, Galvatron. 
But a few years later, when the character returned in the American comic and was revealed to have temporarily been suffering from amnesia after the Space Bridge explosion, the Megatron who had been appearing in the UK stories was retconned into having only been a clone created by Straxus. Only one further figure of Megatron was released in the original toy line in 1990, a non-transforming Action Master, which came with the huge neutral fusion tank that transformed into a battle station. Though Megatron didn't actually take on this form in the comic, the release of the toy did ensure that he continued to appear in the series in its final year, including a horrifyingly memorable story in which he and recurring enemy Ratchet were temporarily fused together in a teleportation accident. Now, over in Japan, there were a couple of notable differences to Megatron's story. When the Transformers toy line was released there, it was the grey version of the microchange toy that was sold as Megatron, not the uncle version, so it lacked the fusion cannon, coming instead with a sword. And while the Action Master wasn't released in Japan at all, Megatron would still return in the 1991 Japanese original storyline, Return of Convoy when the alien Dark Nova reformatted Galvatron into Super Megatron to fight the reborn Optimus Prime. In the decades since the end of the original series, Megatron has remained one of the Transformers franchise's most significant recurring legacy characters, regularly appearing in new incarnations of the brand with more stories and toys to his name than almost any other character. That said, he's not quite as ubiquitous as Optimus Prime. There have been series in which he's only cameoed, like 1996's Beast Wars, in which he attempted to have his own descendant, a Predacon also named Megatron, alter history by travelling back in time and killing Optimus Prime. Plus several major cartoons in which he hasn't appeared at all. And while Prime has a consistency of design across all his different incarnations that ensures he's always recognisable, Megatron's appearance has been much more changeable. You see, new legislation introduced in America in 1988 had outlawed the manufacture of realistic toy guns for children, meaning that Hasbro had to abandon Megatron's classic pistol mode and start redesigning him with new forms, beginning with 1993's Transformers Generation 2, for which he was reimagined as a huge green and purple tank, explained by the Marvel comic to be an upgrade provided by the terrorist organization Cobra in a crossover with G.I. Joe. Since then, Megatron has adopted all kinds of different forms across many different series, including tanks, jets and other aircraft, cars and trucks, and more. He was at his most malleable in the 2000s, a time when each successive new version of Megatron bore almost no resemblance to the previous one. But in later years, some consistency would return to the character's look. First, his robot mode went back to being based on his classic Generation 1 design. Then, eventually, in the mid-2010s, a silver and black tank was settled on as his standard alternate mode. But despite his constantly changing appearance, the similarities between Megatron's various incarnations tend to outweigh the differences. He's still the same merciless, power-hungry warrior described in Budiansky's original profile all those years ago. In some stories, he's the founder of the Decepticons, as in the Marvel comic. But in others, he's just their most recent leader, as in the cartoon. But whichever it is, he's always got to contend with Starscream scheming to take the position from him. He's been upgraded into Galvatron multiple times, though these days that's often treated as more of a temporary transformation, which ends with him reverting to normal. Several series have chosen to begin their stories by taking Megatron out of action so they can build up to his dramatic return in order to convincingly depict him as a serious threat rather than the kind of cartoon villain who gets defeated in every episode. Since the late 2000s, it's become common for stories to explore Megatron's pre-war life and his motivations for starting the war in greater depth, 
One of the earliest and most influential such stories was the 2008 comic book miniseries Megatron Origin from IDW Publishing, which gave him a backstory as a miner who desired to overthrow Cybertron's government due to severe social inequality on the planet. After Generation 2, the first drastically different new incarnation of Megatron was featured in 2001's Robots in Disguise. Able to convert into five alternate modes – Dragon, Bat, Dragster, Jet, and Giant Hand – he was originally conceived in Japan as a new character named Gigatron, but was reimagined as a version of Megatron for Hasbro markets. The Megatron of the Unicron trilogy cycled through several forms – a tank in 2002's Transformers Armada, a gunship in 2004's Transformers Energon, and triple-changing dragster and jet forms in 2005's Transformers Cybertron, repeatedly dying and being reborn in these new forms as he strove to control the godlike power of Unicron. 2007 marked the beginning of the live-action film series, featuring a monstrous Megatron who had once, before the war, been brothers in arms with Optimus Prime until he was swayed to the side of evil. This Megatron sported a new mode in every movie, including alien jets and tanks and earthly trucks. The story of the first film in particular, in which Megatron came to Earth in pursuit of the life-giving Allspark, only to be disabled in a crash landing, then found and studied by humans, was a big influence on that year's new television series, Transformers Animated, in which the same thing happened to its version of Megatron. Only this cunning, manipulative incarnation of the villain tricked his discoverer into helping repair him granting him a new body with a twin-rotor helicopter form. The film series also marked the return of Frank Welker to the role he had originated. Though actor Hugo Weaving portrayed Megatron in the first three films, Give me the old spot, and you may live to be my pet. Welker performed the character for the tie-in video games, and in 2014 took over the role in the movies themselves. You turned your back on Cybertron. Now you will watch Earth die. Welker's return to the role would also lead to him voicing Megatron in 2010's Transformers Prime. Decepticons, your rightful lord and master has returned. This show was part of the new Aligned continuity, which aimed to provide a unified, modern vision for Transformers lore that combined elements of many past series. And as such, this Megatron, who sported an alien aircraft alt mode like the movie character, served as Hasbro's definitive interpretation of the Decepticon leader for the new decade. Born without a name, Megatron had christened himself after a fallen hero from Cybertronian legend known as Megatronus. Forced to work as a miner as a result of a corrupt caste system that locked Cybertronians into specific jobs and social classes from the moment of their creation, Megatron vowed to tear this unjust regime down so that all Cybertronians could be equal. To spread his message, he took to fighting in underground gladiatorial arenas, earning an army of fellow lower-class followers he dubbed the Decepticons. Megatron's movement caught the attention of idealistic young data clerk Orion Pax, and the two became friends, though they disagreed over the best way to achieve Megatron's goals. Megatron favoured violent, revolutionary action, overthrowing the government and taking power, but Orion believed the system could be peacefully reformed. When the pair appeared before Cybertron's High Council to plead their case, the Council was moved by Orion's words of peace and appointed him the next Prime, Optimus Prime, charging him with leading Cybertron into a new future. And the embittered Megatron, furious at what he saw as his friend's betrayal of their shared ideals, declared war to seize the power he believed Optimus had stolen from him. 
Though the specific details vary between tellings, this basic idea of Megatron as a gladiator from the lower classes and a former friend of Optimus Prime's, who fell out with him when the two disagreed about the best way to build a better future on Cybertron, has served as the basis for the character's depiction in virtually all subsequent new series to date. The ideas were even adapted back into IDW's comics, which more deeply explored Megatron's descent into evil from well-intentioned beginnings, and in 2014 told perhaps the most shocking Megatron story ever, as the aging and weary tyrant, his eyes open to how far he had strayed from his original goals, chose to abandon Decepticonism and change sides to the Autobots becoming co-captain of the starship Lost Light and travelling the universe on a quest for redemption for his life of misdeeds. This story occurred at a time when Hasbro seemed a little more willing to do different things in general with Megatron. The movies had turned him into Galvatron, the Prime cartoon had ended with him disbanding the Decepticons after the agony of being possessed by Unicron caused him to lose the will to continue the war, and he was totally absent from its 2015 sequel, Robots in Disguise. The same year, in a reference to the IDW storyline, they even released a Megatron figure with an optional Autobot symbol in the Combiner Wars toyline. But as time has gone on, new films, cartoons and comics have returned Megatron to his position as the franchise's leading villain, including 2018's Transformers Cyberverse and 2020's War for Cybertron trilogy. And whatever the future brings, it seems certain that, like Optimus Prime, Megatron will remain a fixture of the world of the Transformers, the classic original force of evil fighting to achieve peace through tyranny. And those are the basics on Megatron. I hope it was worth the wait. Sound off about your favourite version of Omegs in the comments. Thanks for watching for 150 episodes and for 150,000 subs. And I hope you'll stick around because there is still so much more to learn about the world of the Transformers.